Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, I've got several shabby chic projects sprinkled in with just a few Christmas items. So let's get started. So my first project is a little stool that I thrifted quite some time ago. And it had some stickers or some sort of painted design on it. And so I sanded it down and then I spray painted it with black paint. Um, and I'm sure it was Rust-Oleum paint because, well, that's my favorite name brand. Um, here in North Carolina, we have a lot of humidity. So I don't typically ever use Krylon paint, um, but I use Rust-Oleum spray paint. And you can also find that at Walmart. So I've spray painted it. But then after that, I also like to put a good sealer on it, and I use Rust-Oleum Matte Finish. Once that's all dry, then what I'm doing is I'm putting down just bits and pieces of a transfer from the IOD transfer called Floral Anthology. Um, it's sort of an older transfer, um, and I've used it several times before, but I really like it, and I love the colors in it because they can work both for the spring and the fall. And so these are just little bits and pieces that I have left. The transfer actually is a large set, and there's four sheets of it that are 12 by 16. Well, friends, when you think about how much area that covers, you've got a lot of transfers that you can be using for different projects. You don't have to use it for all one piece. And when you look at the back of the package, a lot of times they'll show pictures of how you can use these transfers. And a lot of times they'll have a picture of maybe a dresser or a chest where they've used the entire piece. Um, but just know that you can always cut it up because all of the flowers in the whole transfer set go together. Um, and when you finish something, People aren't really going to notice it. They're not going to say, oh my goodness, well, she really chopped that up and the pieces don't go together because actually they do because they're all in the same um, colors and the same kind of flowers. So you rub it on with that little plastic tool and then once you finish it, you take that plastic that goes along with it and you rub it on. And that's called burnishing, where maybe it might pick up any of the little pieces of the transfer that didn't go down well. But just recently, I was listening to a YouTube um, channel. I can't remember who it was, but they made a really good point, and I hadn't thought about it. Um, so one of the reasons that I like to burnish it, especially because when it's on a darker surface, sometimes that might leave what they call a halo, which is kind of a little shiny part around the outside edges of the transfer. And so when you burnish it on and you kind of press it down and you rub it around the edges, but well, don't rub it too hard. But when you rub it down, it gets rid of that halo, especially if you're doing it on a darker surface. So it is worth your time to, to use that time to um, burnish it like I'm doing right now. And then you'll go back and you'll seal it and actually, I'll seal this twice because I'm going to be putting this in my booth to sell. But I think it's beautiful. So, what do you think? Do you like it on the black painted surface? And you can also put this on an old vintage window. Or you can put it on something um, that has a white background. And it makes it look just a little bit different. But I love it. Now, my next project is a little canvas bag that I get at Hobby Lobby. And it's actually the size that I made recently that I made the little Bible bag with. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put this in my booth or not. Um, I may have to give this a one away because I think it's so pretty. So I'm using that same transfer set, the Floral Anthology. Well, I've used this transfer a lot this past year. And so honestly, at this point, all I have are little bits and pieces here and there. So it's perfect for something like this. And so I'm not going to go through all the steps of showing you how to transfer it. Otherwise, this video would be a gazillion minutes long. Um, but you see how I'm just adding little pieces, the little stems and the greenery just here and there. 
and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And I think it's just so pretty in the end. Now, let me show you this bow that I like to make. So these are two different color pieces of lace. One is sort of a peachy pink, and the other one is sort of a vintage white. So I take them, and at the same time, I wrap them around about three fingers, about mm, probably three or four times. It depends on how fluffy I want it to be. Now I've got a piece of that same vintage white or vintage cream lace laying on my table. So I take it, kind of pull it off my fingers and lay it down on that lace string. And then I pull that string up and I tie it in the middle in a knot. Now I could be making it on a bow maker, but to me, this is just as fast. So um, if you like this, practice it with some old ribbon um, before you start using maybe any lace. So when I do that though, um, I take that lace and I tie it, pull it up, tie it in a knot, then I twist it around, then I tie it in the front, tie another knot in the front, then I turn it back around and tie it again. So it's going to have a lot of knots in it, but it also pulls it really tight and I think it makes it look a little better. Well, then I decided that I wanted some uh, little pearl strings hanging down. So again, I took those. It was one long piece and about halfway in the middle, I laid it up there where, on the back. And then that same piece of lace that I was using to tie a knot in, I just used that again to tie some more knots to hold in that little string of pearls. And those pearls you get in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. And so just a little tip for you. You know, at Hobby Lobby, the florals are um, on sale every other week. Well, if you've not ever noticed this, on the weeks that the flowers are not on sale, that's when the wedding stuff is on sale. Um, and the wedding section has some great little floral picks, especially if you're wanting something small. So always check that section, even if you're not, you know, getting ready to be married or anything, but they've got some great stuff there. Now I take another piece of that vintage white lace and I tie it around one of the handles. And then I tie it a couple knots and then I lay that bow on it that I've already been you know, already tied several knots front and back, and then I tie some more knots around it. And then that, that puts it on really, really tight. And I love it. Now, what would be pretty too, is you could add a stamp with some script on it. You Maybe a little Bible verse or something, because um, you still have a lot of extra room. But I think it turned out really pretty. And I like how I make these bows. So if you like it, just practice with some old ribbon um, until you feel comfortable with it. Or if you've got like a little bow maker, um, and mine is actually sitting within arm's reach, but I just like to do it like this. Now, this is a little journal, and you can um, think about it. School just started recently, and you know, they put all the composition books um, out for school supplies. So right now is a good time to get little cheap ones. Um, if you wanted to do this as Christmas gifts. Now, this transfer is, is called Victorian Treasure, and I will um, share a link with it in the description box below. But if you think back, um, it's been a while back, I did that piece with that um, Victorian lady on it. Um, it came from that set. So I transferred that little lamp on the journal, and then I'm just making a hang tag with some little different pieces and scraps from it. And then what I'm going to add on top of that is like a little pink cross. Now I will try to find the link for that cross um, and put it in the description box. But it is a mold that I bought off of Etsy. And it's really pretty. It's a, a really decorative little cross. And I made it with hot glue. Um, you could also make it with resin. Um, you could use it for clay as well, but because this is going to be hanging off of it, it needed to either be resin or um, hot glue. So see it over there to the left. It's really pretty. And then I just punched a hole in it, 
and then I'm just kind of using a piece of ribbon and I'm pushing it into that hole where the cross is and that cross will just kind of lay right on top of that hang tag and then um, I will tie a little knot in it and that can be a bookmark for your journal. So maybe it might be something you would use um, during church if you want to take notes during your sermon or it could be your prayer journal. Um, but I just think it kind of adds just a little bit extra to the journal. And I think it just makes a really nice gift. But look at that little Victorian lamp. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love the colors. And so it kind of blends well with that other transfer that I used. Um, I'm trying to keep with the same colors today. the And the shabby chic design, but I think it turned out really pretty. Okay, now look at this. I found this at the thrift shop, and I can't believe I picked it up. And my mom kind of laughed at me, and she goes, What in the world are you doing with that? Well, I, I knew what I kind of wanted to do with it. So um, it had an old verse in it, and it was it was kind of it was kind of ruggedy, and it had a a braided trim that went down the middle. So I pulled that off. It it was hot glued in, so I kind of yanked that off pretty big, and then I painted the whole thing with Rust Oleum chiffon cream, and this transfer also comes from that Victorian treasure. So I put that transfer, I painted it, I put sealer on it, and then I put the transfer on that one side. And then the other um, is just something that I found in like a little, um, I think it's called Ideal Magazine. Um, Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage, she likes to use those old magazines um, to find a lot of different stuff in it when she makes her hang tags. Um, and this has got just a really pretty scripture on it. And so... Um, I did not want to get rid of that braided ribbon um, because it was already glued into the book itself. So I thought I probably just need to refurbish it. Um, and because it's shabby chic and real feminine, I just painted it with a metallic gold and let it dry. And once again, here I am just using scraps of that transfer and just putting little different pieces on it here and there just so that it blends all well together. Now, this book, um, it's, it's almost like they took a real book and they put something on it to make it really hard. Um, so the book is not really, um, you can't, it doesn't feel like paper. I don't know what they use to make it really hard, but it actually was a real book at some point, I think. Um, and even the edges of those pages, they stick up like that all the time. Um, it's something that, you know, people used to give to, eat, you know, other people back maybe for different anniversaries years ago. But it's got a scripture on it, and I just think it's really pretty. And it can make a really nice gift, um, and then you can set it up on an easel. And I, I love the colors of it. And I was glad that I saved that braided trim because I think just putting that gold paint on it just kind of updated it a little bit, and then that way I didn't have to replace it. Okay, now this is one of those little mini cutting boards um, that you can find at Hobby Lobby, and um, you always want to find them when they're on sale. And I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream, and then this stamp comes from the IOD Portobello Road that just came out. And it's that woman that is in the kitchen baking with her apron on. Now, watch me when I do this. This came from the Portobello Road. And this comes from that stamp that is a picture of a bakery shop. So if you're looking at that stamp, you're going to see the window looking into this bakery shop. And there's a cake on a stand. And then the little line above it says bakery. Well, I want to isolate just that image because I want to put that on that little hang tag that's laying over to the left. So I use painter's tape and I tape all around that image that I don't want to show up. So I'm just isolating that little picture of the cake and the part where it says bakery. Now, the reason I'm flipping it back over to the other side is I want to make sure that nothing extra was going to be get ink on it when I do decide to stamp it. 
And now this last piece, um, I kind of have to play with it a little bit because the part where it says bakery, it's kind of rounded off a little bit. So I'm just using little pieces of painter's tape to make it work so that um, I get the image that I want. And anytime you're gonna stamp something, remember, you don't have to stamp the whole thing. If there's just one particular piece on it that you like, put painter's tape actually on the stamp. And then you'll see in just a minute when I put the ink on it, um, it's gonna not get ink on the other parts of that stamp. And so it's not on the flat side, but it's on the part of the stamp that sticks up. Okay, so I'm using the ink, IOD black ink, and I'm just patting it down several times. Now watch. Okay, and see when you pull that painter's tape up, all that has ink on it is um, the part that I isolated. But I still am gonna go around and check and make sure that um, there's no little extra pieces of ink around the sides. And then I just lay it right on top of that hang tag. And when I lay it down, you push your, put your one hand on it and then move the other one with your fingers around it. And try not to get too close to the edge and wiggle it um, because you don't want any of that ink that maybe might been on it to smudge it all. And then I'm just taking some ribbon and hanging that hang tag on top. Look at that. Isn't that so sweet? And then I put another one of my little bows on it that I made. But this would make a perfect gift for somebody at Christmas time. Um, the little mini um, cutting board with the little hang tag. And then you could buy them a cookbook or you could buy them like a little recipe box. Um, but it's going to make a perfect gift. Or you could put it on your Christmas tree as an ornament. Okay, my next little Christmas items are going to be some little animal um, bandanas, the little things that they hang around their neck to make them be all fancy. Um, so I ordered these off of Amazon, and they're white cotton um, little dog or cat bandanas. They said that you could use them for cats too, but personally, I've not seen a cat with one of these on, but um, I've seen a lot of people with little dogs with the, um, the little bandanas around them. Um, especially when um, my daughter had a little dog. I called it my grand dog, and her name was Belle. And my daughter was always dressing her up in these pretty little clothes. Now, this particular stamp came from the IOD Christmas Kitties, and I'm using the red IOD ink. And you do not have to do anything particular to this cotton. You can wash it ahead of time if you want, um, but I did not, and um, I'm just stamping it on. You lay it down, kind of hover it over until you decide where you want it to be, then lay it down, keep one hand, try to keep it still, and then move um, the other hand, move the fingers around and kind of push it down. Then when you pull it up, what I like to do is kind of hold it really tight, and then I pick it up really fast to keep it from smudging. And this will be like a little kitten. And so I wanted to make it just a little bit more fancy. So this also came, um, I think this one came from the adornment stamp. And so um, it's just a little piece that I'm going to put going up the side of this little animal bandana. And I will be doing several of these and putting them in my booth. So if you have, um, if you're going to be in a craft show coming up for Christmas, these are going to be great sellers because people are always wanting something special for their pets, um, especially at Christmas time. And I just think it's a really sweet um, little idea. Now, gracious, I was... That speeded that up a little bit fast, didn't I? So <laughs> this is the puppy one, and I used the green ink on this one. So I just ink it up and kind of hover over that bandana. This is a separate bandana. Kind of hover over it, push it down, and then you're just going to pull it straight up. And the green actually came out a little bit darker. 
and this is a different stamp. Um, it's just a different piece, and I will have it going up both sides of that little bandana. And just remember, use a little baby wipe to go around the edges to get any little extra pieces of ink. And I just think they're so sweet. Um, I don't have somebody that I would be giving these to, but these will be going in my booth. But they'll also make great gifts. And think about it with any of the stamps you've got. If you have a little dog or a little cat that you like to kind of dress up, um, these are really fun to make. And here's both of them. Now, the red did not turn out as dark as I wanted it to, but that's okay. And the green is a little bit darker, but I like both of them. And I haven't started putting Christmas stuff in my booth, but it won't be too much longer. So I'll be getting a few more of these ready to put in my booth. Now, friends, we are almost at the end of the video, and I wanted to show you all of the items today. Here's my little um, book on the easel that would make a great gift, um, especially at Christmas time. And then I've got the little hang tag and the journal and the stool and this little canvas bag. Now, um, the last time I did a canvas bag, somebody asked me if they could wash it, and I'm going to say no. Um, it would be something that if you're going to give it away, or even if you're going to keep it, you're going to want to put some sort of sealer on it, and then you're probably going to want to spray it with Scotch Guard, just in case you spilt some water on it. Um, but these transfers will not hold up um, in the washing machine at all. But in the comments today, tell me what your favorite piece was. And also, I wanted to let you know that I talked to John L. at Decoupage Central this morning, and she still has some the pumpkin molds and the gingerbread molds. Um, I can't remember if she said that if she had any more of the trees. She may have a few. Now, this is from my video on Monday, and I, I messed up when it came time for scheduling. So if you haven't watched this, make sure to go back to my video and watch this because um, these are some really neat projects that I came up with, and I'll share the link. But in this video, I go into a lot of detail about how to use the Portobello Road. And these are actually five separate pieces of scrap wood that I used. Um, and I go all into how you can mask the different stamps so that you can come up with layering. And in this one, I used the Portobello Road for the um, little fireplace and two of the transfers from the Candy Cane Cottage. So if you haven't watched it, I'd love for you to go back and see it. Um, so you can see how you can recreate and make your own shadow box as we get closer to Christmas. But they're so much fun to make. Um, and I've really enjoyed making them. So let me know, um, do you like the little different shadow boxes? Now, make sure that if you like the video today, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and become part of our family. Thank you guys so much.